this is no political meeting, fellas. It's just time to get a quick preview of the new features on the 1961 models. I've asked Tech to help in case I forget to mention any important points. Hey, that's good news, Harry. I've been mighty curious about the new models. That goes double for me, and it's always nice to see Tech again. <laughs> I know it's flattery, Ike, but thanks just the same. Okay, Tech, let's not let our boys sidetrack us. There's a lot on tap that we've got to cover. Now, as usual, there are several styling changes that really improve appearance. Since these have little effect on service, I'd like to talk mostly about mechanical features. The big 61 model news, of course, is the Dodge Lancer, brand new entry in the compact car field. It's about two feet shorter than the Dodge Dart and a fine family car. Now, in the Dodge Lancer lineup, we have a low-priced 170 series. And this consists of a four-door sedan, a two-door sedan, and a four-door two-seat station wagon. Besides that, there is a deluxe 770 series. This includes a four-door sedan, a two-door hardtop, and a four-door two-seat station wagon. Mighty sharp-looking models, in my opinion. That's not all, Joe. The Valiant that turned so many heads last year has two new body styles. A V100 two-door sedan and a V200 two-door hardtop. Tech's right. And we really ought to take a close look at the new two-door hardtops. Adjustment of the rear quarter drop glass on these models is a little different from that on bodies you've worked on before. The rear run for the drop glass holds the stationary quarter glass and can't be adjusted. But the front run can be adjusted to improve operation if necessary. The regulator assembly can also be repositioned. Now, here's an example. If the rear quarter drop glass binds at the rear edge of the door glass, do not move the door. To relieve a tight drop glass fit, move the division bar and front vent wing assembly forward. Next, adjust the door glass rear run forward to provide clearance for the rear quarter drop glass. Close the door and check glass operation. Very clear, Harry. Anything else on bodies? Yeah, Ike. The Mylar locking strip introduced on Valiant windshields and rear windows will also be used on the Lancer. There's a new special tool that simplifies installing the locking strip. And now, suppose we talk about the new engine lineup. Starting at the top. The 413 cubic inch engine that set a fast pace last year is again on Imperial and Chrysler New Yorker models. It has a Carter AFB four-barrel carburetor and a 10 to 1 compression ratio. How does that compare with last year's? Well, basically, it's the same, Ike. But the carburetor's improved, and other under-the-hood changes make a big difference. Uh, we'll cover them soon. Just hold your horses. Yeah, like Tex says, Ike, relax. You'll get the full story soon enough. Now, the 383 cubic inch engine is also back. It has a Carter BBD two-barrel carburetor and is standard on the Chrysler Windsor model. The same 383 cubic inch engine with a Carter AFB four-barrel carburetor is optional on Plymouth, Dodge Polara and on Dodge Dart police cars. And there's a 383 cubic inch engine with ram induction and two Carter AFB four-barrel carburetors. This is an option on the Dodge Polara, Dodge Dart, and on the Dodge Dart police special. On the Plymouth Fury, this engine is also known as the Sonoramic Commando. Now, all of the 383 cubic inch engines have the high compression ratio of 10 to 1. Now, here's bigger engine news. We have a 361 cubic inch engine with a Bendix Stromberg WW two barrel carburetor. This baby has a compression ratio of nine to one and will deliver outstanding performance on regular fuel. Nine to one and on regular fuel? That's really all right. Oh, it's a prize power package, Ike. Intake valves are bigger for better engine breathing. And this has been made possible by changes in the cylinder heads. Piston height has been decreased 25 thousandths. What models get that regular fuel 361 cubic inch engine? It's standard on three models, Joe. The Dodge Polara, DeSoto, and on the Chrysler Newport. Now, there's a high-performance version of the 361 cubic inch engine offered as an option on Plymouth and Dodge Dart. It's equipped with a Carter AFB four-barrel carburetor, a high-performance camshaft, and a different distributor. 
Next, we have the 318 cubic inch power plant. It's equipped with either a Bendix Stromberg WW or Carter BBD two-barrel carburetor. Compression ratio is 9 to 1, and it uses regular fuel. It's the standard V8 on Plymouth and Dodge Dart. There's also a high-performance version of the 318 cubic inch engine. It has a Carter AFB four-barrel carburetor, high-performance camshaft, and a different distributor. You'll find this engine optional on Plymouth and Dodge Dart. The standard Plymouth and Dodge V8 engine built in Canada has a 313 cubic inch displacement. It has a slightly different carburetor lineup. The two popular slant six engines introduced last year are back, the 225 and the 170 cubic inch jobs. Have those sixes been changed much? Oh, nothing drastic, Ike. The compression ratio on both sixes has been reduced to 8.2 to 1. Any advantages to that compression ratio reduction? Yeah, Joe. Lowering the compression ratio makes our sixes more adaptable to variations in octane rating of regular fuel. The engines run smoother, quieter, and there's less chance of detonation. In addition, valve timing's been advanced, resulting in improved low-speed torque. Attaboy, Tech. Sums up the advantages nicely. Intake manifolds on the new sixes are cast iron, by the way. And both sixes have the protection of the full-flow, screw-on, throw-away type of oil filter. On the 225 cubic inch engine, there's a Carter BBS single-barrel carburetor. Regular fuel is used, of course. This is the standard engine on Plymouth, Dodge Dart, and on some Dodge truck models. It's available as optional equipment on the Dodge Lancer. The 170 cubic inch six has a Carter BBS single barrel carburetor and purrs like a kitten on regular fuel. It's the standard Valiant and Dodge Lancer engine and is also used on the D100 one half ton Dodge Dart pickup truck. All of the new six cylinder engines have revised choke and carburetor calibrations. Right, Tech. Good point. Hey, that reminds me, Harry. Weren't you going to tell us about some carburetor changes? Oh, yeah, Joe. There are two new carburetor refinements you ought to be up to date on. A two-stage step-up rod is used in all V8 Carter carburetors except the AFB models used with police and ram induction packages. This step-up refinement promotes better performance in the intermediate speed range. And besides that, all carburetor float needles are tipped with high-grade synthetic rubber. This needle seats better, and flooding caused by dirt between the valve and seat will be virtually eliminated. Sounds good, Harry. What else is different? Well, a new closed crankcase ventilation system, Ike. It's optional on all new engines and is especially desirable on taxis, package delivery, and other stop-and-go vehicles, and on cars that operate in extremely cold climates. The system provides positive crankcase ventilation. Manifold vacuum pulls crankcase vapors through a tube and into the intake manifold. The crankcase vapors pass into the cylinders and are burned. Won't that upset carburation? Not a chance, Ike. There's a valve that regulates crankcase vapor flow. At idle, this valve is closed, but a small opening permits a small amount of vapor flow. At higher speeds, the valve opens to increase vapor flow. Incidentally, this ventilation system uses a specially calibrated carburetor with an adapter below the throttle valves. Anything special in the way of service? Oh, it's mostly a matter of periodic cleaning, Joe. Under normal driving conditions, clean the valve and tube every 10,000 miles. During cold weather, when more sludge and carbon tend to form, clean the system more frequently. What you do is disassemble the valve and clean the parts with a good solvent. Use compressed air to dry the parts. Then reassemble the valve, but carefully. Details on assembly are in the reference book. Good deal, Tech. I'll give it a close look. Atta boy, Joe. Now, if somebody will please turn this record, we'll talk about the new alternator lineup for 61. Like Tech said, we'll be seeing more alternators. All U.S. cars have a 35-ampere alternator instead of a conventional DC generator. In addition, a 40-ampere alternator is available as special equipment on both U.S. and Canadian-built cars. There's also a 40-ampere alternator with a double pulley used on cars equipped with air conditioning systems. Now, here's an important alternator service tip. 
Last year's diode removing and installing tool can be modified to handle diodes used in the new as well as the old alternators. Good point, Harry. And that modification story is in the reference book. Yep, and here's something else. A new voltage regulator is now used in connection with the alternators. It's a yoke-type regulator. And on close examination, you'll notice that the stationary upper and lower contacts are mounted on an adjustable ceramic block. I think you'll find that point and air gap adjustments are much easier to make. The space between the two stationary contacts is preset. Usually, adjusting the ceramic block to get the proper air gap setting will give you the correct lower contact spacing. But always check that. If necessary, bend the lower contact bracket to get the correct spacing. A fuse wire for each contact replaces the external inline fuse used with former voltage regulators. The fuse wires can be replaced, but be sure to follow the replacement tips in the reference book. You can install the new regulator on 1960 models, fellas. But if you do that, remove the inline fuse. Don't worry, Tech. We'll keep an eye out for that. You do that, Ike. Now, here's another electrical feature. Three new Chrysler-built distributors are used on all U.S.-built six-cylinder engines and on V8 engines of 318 and 413 cubic inch displacement. Now, these new distributors feature die-cast aluminum housings and new breaker points designed for better performance and longer life. And besides that, V8 engines in all U.S. cars will feature the Chrysler Corporation-built positive engagement solenoid shift starter. Say, that's a good feature, Harry. And speaking of a shift, how about shifting to the subject of new transmissions? Well, I was just coming to it, Joe. We do have a story on transmissions. For U.S. cars, there'll be a family of four three-speed manual transmissions, and all are rather similar in basic design. There's a transmission used with the 170 cubic inch engine on Valiant and Dodge Lancer models. It has a 2.71 to 1 low gear ratio and a 1.83 to 1 ratio in second. Plymouth and Dodge Dart cars with the 225 cubic inch engine both use a transmission similar to the Valiant and Lancer gearbox. But the extension is different because it carries the parking brake. The Plymouth and Dodge Dart transmission also has a low gear ratio of 2.71 to 1 and a second gear ratio of 1.83 to 1. These ratios, higher than these models had last year, provide better breakaway acceleration. Now, there's a third transmission for the 318 cubic inch V8 engine on Plymouth and Dodge Dart. Gear ratios here, though, are 2.12 to 1 in low, 1.43 to 1 in second, the same as last year. The fourth manual transmission is the entirely new heavy-duty member of the family. It's standard on models using the 361 cubic inch V8 engine. In other words, it's standard on the Dodge Polara, DeSoto, and Chrysler Newport. It has a 2.55 to 1 low gear ratio and a 1.49 to 1 ratio in second. When used on the Chrysler Newport, the heavy-duty manual transmission has a sporty tunnel shift. Other models use a steering column shift. Right. The heavy-duty transmission is also used on Dodge trucks and is optional on taxi cabs and fleet cars. When used on Dodge truck and these heavy-duty passenger cars, gear ratios are 3.02 to 1 in low and 1.76 to 1 in second. What makes it a heavy-duty gearbox, Harry? Why, there are heavy-duty ball bearings at the main drive gear and main shaft. There's also a ball bearing at the rear end of the main shaft. The counter shaft has two sets of double-row roller bearings. The reverse idler also has roller bearings. In addition, the heavy-duty transmission has heavy-duty straddle-type shift forks. I see, Harry. How about the clutch? Anything new? Well, Ike, there's a 10-inch clutch with a new disc used when the heavy-duty transmission is on six-cylinder engine taxi cabs. The new disc has a slightly shorter hub. You can install the new disc on last year's cars, but you can't use last year's clutch on 1961 taxicabs. And the same 10-inch semi-centrifugal clutch featured last year is again on cars equipped with the 318 cubic inch engine and manual transmission. 
Then there's a special application of a ten and one half inch semi-centrifugal clutch. This is used when the heavy duty transmission is coupled to the 361 cubic inch two barrel engine for Dodge Polaro, DeSoto, and Chrysler Newport. Clutch size goes up to 11 inches when the heavy duty transmission is used on a four barrel 361 cubic inch engine. Okay, very clear. How about the automatic transmissions? Well, the same automatic transmissions that performed so well last year, Joe, will again be available. But you already know that story. All right, Tech. Now, how about 61 brakes? Well, brakes are basically the same. But there is a new parking brake on the Valiant and Dodge Lancer. The lever and release are entirely new. The lever's been redesigned for easier application. The cable is routed directly to a cable equalizer and doesn't enter the engine compartment. In addition, the ratio bar has been eliminated. Right and left parking brake cables attach directly to the equalizer cable. The parking brake adjustment is made at the equalizer. Not a boy, Harry. Why not mention the suspension changes next? Hmm? It's a good idea, Tech. There's been a one-eighth degree increase in camber. Adjustment procedure remains the same. A table of camber and caster specifications is in the reference book. Now, each rear spring on Plymouth and Dodge Dart six-cylinder models will have one more leaf, five instead of four. The extra leaf adds to spring life without altering the ride quality we've always enjoyed. Overflow shock absorbers have some valving refinements. The seat of the base valve has been narrowed. Valve grooves have been made shallower. Less hydraulic force is needed to open the valve so it opens smoothly and quietly. Hey, any change in tires? Yep. There are some changes in tire and wheel sizes and pressures. Be sure to check the specifications for the model you're working on. That's good advice, Tech. Now, here's an accessory change. The air conditioning system has a new modified compressor which has the evaporator pressure regulator valve installed internally. In general, though, the operation... Airflow, electrical circuits, and test procedures are the same. There are some changes in test pressures, so be sure to use the 61 air conditioning specifications. boy, Tech. Good tip. Now, here's more news. We've got a motor-driven windshield washer that's bound to be a popular accessory. A button in the wiper knob controls an electric motor coupled to a gear pump. This new washer is standard on Chrysler and Imperial. Washer solution sprays the windshield as the button's pressed. Adjustable nozzles direct the fluid as desired. Sounds like a good idea, Harry. That it does, Ike. In fact, all the 61 features make a lot of sense. And good service on our part is the big key to customer acceptance. Right toe, Harry. Now, while we've got a good number of improvements, there aren't any radical changes to trouble you master technicians. Just keep the customer's best interest in mind and we'll all have a good year.